What's up guys, welcome back to the Ticket Tech video. Good notes. It's a popular note-taking app and it originally came out on iOS and iPad, um, but now it's actually moved across to Android as well. I've made a lot of note-taking app videos, free note-taking app. Good notes is the first one that is not free, um, but I wanna know if actually paying that extra money, if it actually offers you any benefit and if it's worth it at all. So considering GoodNotes 6 is a subscription-based service, the first thing we need to do is get that out of the way. So with GoodNotes, you can download it for free technically. You have some limited access. It's good if you want to try it out, but you can't do much with the free version. Now the base subscription is $9.99 a year. That pretty much covers everything and it's across all the different platforms, so iOS and Android. Um, you can actually, if you've got an Apple device, you can get a one-time fee of $29.99. That's just a one-time thing. It doesn't give you access, however, to Windows or Android or the web browser. Now, if you've only got an Android or a Windows device, you can access that for a yearly subscription of $6.99. All right, so now that we've got the pricing out of the way, let's actually have a look at the app itself. So I'm gonna split this into five categories. We've got the design, the features, the pen support, organization and synchronization. These are the five things I look for in a note-taking app. So when you talk about design, what I mean here is how does the app look? A note-taking app for me at least has to kind of be simple. It has to be filled with features, but easy to navigate, doesn't feel cluttered. So good notes make it very nice and simple and clean, white background, files organized, folders organized, and you can change the, the organization by the date, the name and the type. When you go into your folder, it's easy to identify what notes, what, what type of note it is because it kind of shows you the front page of each note, which I really like. If you don't want to look at it like that, you can actually have it as a list if that helps you find your files more easily. On the left, you've got some simple icons here. So you've got a favorites, which you can access all your favorites. And you've got a search bar as well to find the particular notes that you're looking for, as well as your shared notes, which you've shared with other people. A large part of the design is also your customization. So what you can do with GoodNotes 6, which you couldn't do with the previous GoodNotes, is actually change the folder colors. So now you can change the color to whatever you want and even the notebook covers you can customize. Now the design when you actually go into a notebook is also very nice and simple. You have your icons at the top, you've got clear color options there, and you've got your menus at the top icon here. Everything is quite clearly laid out and intuitive to use, which is great. There isn't really much more to say about the design, and I think that's a good thing. So I do like its simplicity. So now let's talk about the features. And this is this is the biggest category, essentially. This is what has the most weighting, because the more you can do with the note-taking app, the more use it has to you, especially if you're paying for it. So to open a note, you just click on new. There are different types of notes you can have. So you can either import a PDF, or you can start a notebook from scratch. And here it gives you an option to kind of choose uh, the layout that you want. So for example, you can customize the paper color. I like it as a pale yellow. You can get it as a lined um, and you can name your notebook here. The first icon is a pen. Obviously that lets you write, right? Okay, so you've got different kinds of pen. Um, with the Apple Pencil, you also have the added benefit of tilt and pressure control. So so for example, with a, with, so for example, with a fountain pen, if I press lightly versus if I press really hard, um, it makes it thicker or thinner. It also depends on the speed as well. So quick and slow will also change the thickness of your pen. Now, you can access the eraser obviously directly through here, or you can double tap your Apple Pencil. The eraser is okay. So you have these three different thicknesses, essentially. I feel like they could have done it a bit smarter. Other note-taking applications, similar to how your ink gets thicker and thinner, depending on how quickly you're moving the pen, it would be nice if the erasers did the same thing. So if I'm erasing slowly in a small area, the eraser is small and pinpoint and detailed. Whereas if I want to erase something quickly and I move my pencil quickly, so that the erase area could go larger and erase more in a single strip. But at the moment, you're just limited to these three options. Now there isn't really anything super special that I've shown you guys just yet, but good notes do have some really smart features. One of them is autocorrect. So if I write, for example, I really like cake, it will identify that I've spelled really with one L instead of two. And if I click on it, I can actually correct it. I will actually try and use my handwriting to correct it. It's also identified that cake is incorrect. It's a little bit hit and miss, as you can see. Sometimes if your handwriting is not the best like mine is, sometimes it'll think you've spelt a word incorrectly. Another cool feature is actually, it'll try and correct your lines and your shapes by making them more neat. So for example, if I want to underline something and it's usually a bit squiggly, if I hold it down, it'll make it straight. Similarly, if I wanted to circle this, but make it look neater and I hold it, it'll make it into a nice oval. 
and actually as long as I keep my, my finger, not my finger, my pen um, on the screen, I can then adjust the size and the position. What I like is that I've got these four tabs here to quickly switch between colors. You can choose as many colors as you want. So if you've got, if, so if the pre-populated colors here is not enough, uh, you can add pretty much an infinite amount of colors that you want. It would be cool to have a feature where you can actually add more colors here. So for example, if you wanted more than a palette of four, you could have more, you could have a palette of five or six. Um, obviously that would take up more space, but there's always ways to go around it. You could have the palette floating somewhere else around the screen. Sometimes four is not enough, but that's not a major deal. Now, now when you're writing, you'll make mistakes or you wish that you wrote something in a different color or a different size. That's where Lasso comes in. So Lasso is an individual setting here. You can circle something and then it allows you to move it around. Now, if you click on it, it gives you some options on what to do. So you can resize it and you can even change its color. Now, you would think that it's more intuitive to be able to want to select something. If you can move it around with your finger, why can you not zoom in and out a bit like that? It seems a bit unnecessary to have to go into it and then open up all the options. Oh, I also want to add that you don't actually have to go into the lasso option to have that activated. You can just circle something, tap on it, and then that will also activate the lasso option. So some of the other features here are a little bit more gimmicky. So you have some stickers that you can do. So if you're one of those people who like having really graphic uh, notes, then you have a, a plethora of stickers that you can choose. And um, you can obviously choose your images. Now this is a bit more useful. So for example, I can put this image here. On this page, all it lets you do is change the size. <laughs> if you want to do more with the image, you have to go into it and then click on the options here. So for example, if I want to crop this, and then have to, I'd have to do that. Again, I think it's unnecessary. I think it'd be quite intuitive just to open it up and just how it's intuitive to be able to resize and stretch the image. I think I think it'd be useful if there was a little crop toggle here without having to actually tap the image and then click on the option you want. That's a theme that I'm noticing a lot of here is that to access a lot of features, you have to do additional steps to get there. It makes it a little bit less intuitive. I do want to point out another cool feature, which is the ruler. This I wasn't expecting to work as well as it does, but I can honestly see how it could be really useful. You can you just hold the ruler where you want, and then when you put the pen on it, it will automatically keep it as a straight line. So even if I, as you can see, go in and out of the ruler, it will keep it as a straight line. What you can't do though is go back. So unfortunately, for example, if I want to measure six centimeters and I slightly shoot over, it would be good if it let me kind of go back and only kind of set it there when I let go of the pencil. Now there are some features that it has that I just personally, I don't know if I'm using it wrong, but it doesn't work very well with me. So one of them is the is the handwriting to text. So it has this option where I can write on the screen and it should be ideally be putting it in a text box. You don't have to write exactly in the text box. You can write um, anywhere on the screen. So I can say, hello. The problem with this though is that sometimes it just decides to write on, an, on another line. So if I write here, see it will do it on another line. And I think it's because I've written on the screen lower than when I had written previously. So it thinks that I want to go to another line. So it's trying to be helpful. I find it annoying. I tend not to use it, especially because it doesn't line up with the lines on the, on the, on the iPads. So even if I change the size, so for some reason it will never line up exactly with the lines in the page. Now you don't have to only write, you can also use your keyboard and there's a separate section section for that. But that's less interesting, so I'm not really gonna go into that. It does have another feature where you have where you can record your audio. So this is a really cool feature because if for example you've got a your note your lecture slides up and you record the lecture slide as your lecturer is going through your PowerPoints. When you stop it, you can access your recordings here and play them. Um, and if you record multiple recordings, they'll all save here and you can then access it through this drop-down menu. Now, what I would have liked to see is if I could pin that audio to a page. So this way, when I'm scrolling back through my notes, I don't have to listen to the whole recording. I can just go to page five, for example, and listen to what was being said during that time. But I don't think that's currently a feature. Now, as I mentioned, if you don't just have to write on a blank canvas, you can actually import PDFs. So for example, I can import this PDF and annotate it with the same kind of features as I did previously. The good thing about GoodNotes actually is that you can actually have multiple folders or files open at the same time. So if I grab this and just put it to the side, I can split that screen, I can split screen that with 
a brand new blank canvas. So if I want to make notes on this side based on based on my PowerPoint on here, I can do that. It's probably better if I rotate it this way. And you can resize the windows how you want. Now, now the cool thing about this is actually it helps with the copy and pasting. So if I use my lasso tool that I talked about previously and recircle that, I can actually take a screenshot of that, hold it and move it across to this page here. Again, I think it'd be more intuitive if I could just circle it and then hold it and then move it across, but it doesn't really let you do that. You have to hold it, click, take screenshot, grab that and move it across. So there are ways I think it could still be improved. And OneNote 6 is really trying to advertise its AI features and it's offering something which actually I think is really cool. So what you can do is, if you go to this tab here and you click on Marketplace and click on Education, you can actually use AI to help you with your homework or exam revision. Now at the moment it's limited to a number of exam types, but I'm sure with time, these will start to increase. So for example, you can have things like your GCC biology, your SATs. Now these all come at their own individual cost. They're not part of your subscription. Um, you do have to pay an additional amount for it, but they're not too expensive and I think they could be quite useful. Some of them are free. Um, for example, the SAT maths is free. Now the cool thing about it is that it recognizes what you're writing and actually offers suggestions and hints and tells when you're wrong. So in this question here, so I can start solving it. I've written the answer as x equals 3 and it's underlined it in red. Now if I click on that, it will tell me that it thinks that there's something wrong here. So it actually recognizes that that's not the correct part. It doesn't really tell me the answer. Um, they do have a hint section here, but not specific to, to what you've messed up in. It would be nice to actually see what, what the solution is to the mistake that you've done. Um, but at least it prompts you that you've, you've made the mistake somewhere and it'll tell you where you've made that mistake. So, all right, so those are all the features I think are worth talking about with GoodNotes. Now let's talk about pen support. Obviously it varies on from device to device. So if you've got an iPad and you're using an Apple Pencil, you're going to have excellent pen support. If you've got a Samsung tablet and you're using the Samsung S Pen, you're going to have good pen support. However, if you're using a third party pen, you'll probably miss out on certain features. So if what I mean, for example, is if you've, got a, if you've got an Apple Pencil and you're writing, the double tap feature that works natively on Apple Notes works on, on here as well. But the fact that this app makes use of the pressure as well as the speed kind of features of the pen, but actually that just shows that they're, they're designing their application specifically, not just for the device, but for, all, but for the, the pen that's being used with it. It would be nice if I could do more with the tap function. So at the moment I can just switch from pen to eraser, but it would be good if I could switch colors as well. So for example, if I hold and press and then I activated my favorite color or my favorite pen and color, that would be useful. Or, or if it let me switch between the different colors, that would be useful too. But from what I can tell so far, that's not currently a feature integrated with the Apple Pencil. Uh, it's also got additional features, for example, if I'm writing, so hello. Like I mentioned, you can go to Eraser to erase something, but actually, if you just scribble out what you don't want, most of the time it recognizes it. So pen support, at least from iPad to the Apple Pencil, is really good. All right, let's quickly talk about organization. Obviously, when you have a note-taking app, you're gonna pile up a lot of notes, so you wanna organize them. Individual notes are, are termed notebooks. So like I mentioned, you can customize the cover of them, you can customize the color of your folders. If you hold a notebook and put it into a folder, it will also it'll intuitively go into that folder. What it won't do is intuitively come out of that folder. So for example, this is the notebook here. If I hold on to that, I can't easily take it out of the folder. I'd have to click the drop down menu, click move, and remember where it was, and then click to move. What I also think is not very intuitive is the creation of folders. So I think if I'm holding a notebook and I'm putting it on top of another notebook, it should be able just to create a new folder. I think that'd be a more intuitive way of doing it, but it doesn't really let me do that at the moment. I have to click on new, and then I have to click on folder to create a new folder. However, the good thing is, is that there's an unlimited amount of folders you can do. So when you go into a folder, you can set up more folders. You can go into that and if I wanted to, I could set up more folders. So some applications, so for example, uh, OneNote with Microsoft, only lets you have a certain number of subfolders. Whereas this one, you can, from as I can tell, indefinitely create more and more folders. I'm sure there is a limit somewhere. Finding your notes is important as well. So for example, if I type in test, 
it can hopefully find the, the name of the notebook, but it'll also search for words within the note itself. Like right there. Overall though, I don't really have too many complaints about this. I think it's quite a straightforward, you know, folder system. Just some of the ways you can move things into a folder and out of the folder could be more intuitive. All right, so the last thing I wanna talk about is synchronization. There's no point having your notes here if you can't have it on your phone, on a PC, on your MacBook. They need to work across platform. So you can, there is a, there is a cloud uh, option. So you can back it up to iCloud in this case, but you can also back it up to OneDrive as well as some other drives. So that's great. It means if you've logged in with iCloud on your iPhone, all your notes from an iPad are on your iPhone. The same should work also with OneDrive. There is a weird thing though that I just wanna mention is that you can actually log in with iCloud on an Android device. So this iPad is backed up on iCloud, but when I download GoodNotes on an Android device and log in with the iCloud, although it recognizes the same user and the subscription, it doesn't import the folders. I couldn't figure out a way for it to automatically import. iPad, iPhone does it straight away iPad, Android phone doesn't do it straight away. So you can download uh, GoodNotes now on the Windows, App Store, Android, which is great. You can have it across all those platforms. For however, you're using like a public computer, for example, at work, and you want to access your notes, how do you do that? So Microsoft OneNote do that very well. As long as you just log in with your same account, you can access all your notes on the web. You don't have to use the application. GoodNotes, they they do have a web version. I've got it here on this laptop. They do say you can log on, you can log in with Google, Microsoft, or Apple. I tried logging in with the iCloud, but it didn't work. So maybe that's something that they will improve. Maybe it's just my experience, but that is a feature that is that they say they have. So I'm just going to take their word for it. If any of you guys have been able to access GoodNotes on the web, then let me know. I'm also not sure if it's easier to sync across different devices if you use for example a OneDrive or you use a Google Drive instead of using an iCloud. For my one experience when I tried to log in with iCloud on my Android phone it didn't sync up but if I had originally tried to log in to this with my OneDrive and then log in with OneDrive on an Android phone I don't know if that would would, would make a difference. Otherwise guys I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, good notes. Clearly I can tell why it's one of the popular applications. It offers a lot of features, it's a clear design, it's easy to use. GoodNotes 6 is now mainly subscription based, so that's gonna be a disadvantage for a lot of people, but the price is reasonable, I think. I can see a lot of cool features in it. My main thing is that sometimes I feel there's too many steps to reach the feature that you want. Not everything has to be in an option menu. There are ways to intuitively incorporate that um, within, within the application. Let me know what you guys think. Do you use GoodNotes? Are there any other note-taking applications that you think are worth it? Um, and I'll be happy to review them. So leave them in the comments below. All right, I'll see you in the next TKTech video.